So it's a time to be serious, isn't it? It's a time to be um, very vigilant, very diligent. Thank you for those of you that join us on the 15s. How many of you try to tune in once in a while to the Giving 15? I appreciate it. I won't take too much time uh, mentioning that, but I will say this. Nothing has ever taken me by surprise that I've ever done in my life of ministry like those given 15s have taken me by surprise. When, when uh, what was her name? You know, Julie Meyer, who is one of the matriarch worship, prophetic worshipers of IHOP, she now has moved to California and has a ministry there. But uh, when she sang prophetically over me in Kansas, I think probably seven years ago now, the service was over. She had been up playing and singing, and we, do, we did some harp and bowl at the end of the service. And it was finished. And I was back down at my seat gathering my things, and people were just about to grab the purses and go. And she starts playing and singing again. Dutch. She's singing my name. Much better than that, by the way. She can really sing. Three times. And then she starts to say, you're going to change the world through the number 15. Much better than that. I mean, it all was all done very well. 15 minutes, 15, 15. You know what you have to do, do it. You know what you have to do, do it. 15, 15. <laughs> I'm sitting there telling the Lord, you know, the Lord will, he, who, know, who, who knows and declares the end from the beginning is out there saying, you know what you have to do. I'm listening to it saying, I don't have the slightest idea what she's talking about. I had no idea. I don't. So we, we finally decided to, uh, write uh, a little a short post much shorter than what we have now and a few prayer points and just release it every day and just only in uh, print and maybe some people would take it and pray and I knew I didn't have time to do it so I hired a person to take my messages and books and write one of those every day about a page and a half and 50 and I said, this is all, all you have to do. You just write these every day. You, you research, you write. You research, you write. Well, I think about 15,000 people a day were reading those and praying with us. You know, and my, my attitude was, I'll take 15,000 people agreeing in prayer for the nation on a daily basis anytime. You know? So... And even that idea to have to write those and have her do it was one of my staff members. I said, well, I don't have time to do those. I mean, up until two years ago, I was averaging 70 cities a year in this nation traveling to gather people to pray. I said, I don't have time to do this, but we do have this word hanging over us. from some other female prophet. <laughs> and so, you know, and I had started doing a podcast or two here and there, not much, but hey, I've done four or five, I think, when the November, October, whatever it was, rolled around in 2020. And I thought, well, you know, if I, I, maybe I could facilitate more prayer if I start for the next couple of months, write these myself and just, Dude, I'm a professional now. I've done four or five of these podcasts. <laughs> so I could video them and not just put them out there in print. And of course, there was such a, a intensity about that whole election and the process. It went from 15,000 to 350 to 400,000 every day for, for the next three months. And when it was over in January, people started saying to me, including my staff, well, you can't stop this now. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, 
given the fact that these take four to six hours to write and record, you do realize that I just ever, I just added 25 to 30 hours to my work week. And I'm just about dead. I was frazzled. And so I went to the Lord and I said, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm going to tell you all this. Just chill. Are we on time restraint tonight? Okay. I finally told Cece, I said, I'm done with these. Not that I didn't like doing it. I was just exhausted. And I said, I just can't keep up this, this pace. I just can't do it. I was working 70 hours, 80 hours a week. And I just, I can't do this. And, you know, I had this nagging thought. Maybe he wants you to change something else. I said, <laughs> Because the older you get, the harder it is to change some things, you know. So I told her, I said, I'm going off to this meeting in Arkansas this weekend. We got to get back here. Monday, we're going to talk about how to phase this out. And I, when I walked in the green room at the, meet, that, the church where the, the meeting was taking place, uh, a lady in the green room made just a beeline for me when I walked in the door. I didn't know who she was. But she said, hi, I'm so-and-so, told me her name. I recognize her name because that week on the, on the post, one of the posts we had, <clears throat> we had talked about and prayed regarding a bill that was coming up for a vote in Arkansas regarding abortion. And if it passed, it would be the strongest pro-life legislation in the country, which now they are, they are abortion free. You know, Arkansas is abortion free. But because of that. But I knew the man, Jason Rapert, the, the state senator who had uh, written the bill, but the co-sponsor in the House, I did not know. And it was this lady. And I recognized her name because I had mentioned his name and her name when we talked about this and when we prayed about it, prayed for them and prayed for this before the vote. And she ran to me and she said, thank you for what you do. I said, you're welcome. She said, just this week, I was telling the Lord, I can't do this anymore. And I'm thinking, <laughs> she said, the, th the threats on my life, the threats to my children, my grandchildren, the lawsuits, that they just keep filing one right after they try to bleed all their finances. And she rattled off <clears throat> two or three things. She just said, I just told the Lord, I, I just... I just can't, I can't do this anymore. And she said, I jump, jump, you know, out of bed like I always do, and turn the coffee pot on, grab my cup of coffee, and open my computer, and pull up, give him 15 to have while I, while I was having my morning coffee, telling the Lord, I can't do this anymore. And then she said, she starts crying. She said, while I was telling the Lord this, I heard my name. I heard my, you were saying my name. And you talked about this and you prayed for me by name. And I realized there can be a couple hundred thousand people around the country today praying for me by name. And she said, I told the Lord, I can do this. And she walked away and the Lord said, <clears throat> he really doesn't play fair. I'm going to tell you right now. He, he does not play fair. I said, okay, 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 okay.
So the lawyer just basically said to me, you know, you need to, you need to, you need to change some other things. You need to stop traveling as much and start shifting the way you help lead this movement. And, and I have listened and obeyed that and try to be very careful about where I go and what I do. And, 